Hello and welcome to Handmade Originals. This is the YouTube channel where I tackle a variety of creative projects in the hope of giving you confidence and maybe even inspiring you to have a go yourself. Find your inner creativity and nurture it. Right, we're still in wedding season. In my previous video I showed you how to make a wedding garter um, and that is absolutely beautiful for um, any sort of bigger dress. But in this video I'm going to show you how to make a wedding garter for a very fitted dress um, which has to be very flat to the leg um, and it's quite straightforward how to do it so I'm going to go through with you the design process because lots of people say oh I don't know where you get your ideas from so I'm going to demonstrate exactly that where I get my ideas from. So Let's start first with the materials we're going to use. The simplest way to make a very flat garter on the leg is just to use a band of stretch lace. And you do need to check the um, width of the band because quite a lot of them come up uh, much wider and that actually will probably look too big on a leg. So this is about, um, looks about 10 centimetres, it looks it's 8 centimetres and that's pretty perfect. The only thing with this is that it does rather resemble a top of a fancy stocking. So to my mind, yes that would work, just sew it up as a, a loop around the leg, but it's, it needs a bit more embellishment than that. And so I'm thinking I can put some really pretty lace on top of that, or you could put diamante or something like that. So where do you get your lace from, your fancy decorative lace? Well, I have here this is just some trim. If you look up trim on um, Amazon, you'll find all sorts. Um, actually, quite a lot of it comes from either America or from China. Um, if it's coming from either of those two places, it does take a long time to get here, so you do need to make allowances for that. Um, and what I do is just cut, cut up the little bits of lace and play with it, really, until you find a nice pattern. So that's one way to get your your decorative lace. Alternatively, I found this old top of my daughter's, which I've kept for ages, it doesn't fit her at all anymore, but I've kept for ages because I really love the lace in that. But actually I'm not going to cut out of this one uh, because I found something better, which is this. And this is um, a beautiful border of Guipur lace, um, which, I bought for a project but I never actually used. So I was looking at this and thinking, you know, I, I can't use that, that's much too big. But if I cut a piece out, and initially I cut out this piece, um, then I could use that. But then I looked at that on the leg and really you have to just put it on against the leg to see how big it is. And I realised that scale um, dictated that this was actually much too big for the leg. So I then cut it again and rotated this piece and this is absolutely perfect. So going back to my stretch lace, I then thought I'll just pop that on there and that will look lovely. And it does look lovely, but white against white doesn't really show up. So then I thought, well, what if I dye this um, a nude colour to match the leg and that will make this stand out more. And the way I did that, and I was quite surprised it worked actually, was I just cut myself the length I needed and I popped it in a bowl of boiling water with three tea bags and it came out that colour, which I think you'll agree makes that lace now stand out much more. And then I was thinking, well, maybe I could incorporate those leaves as well and something like that. But I'm not sure whether or not that's all just a bit too busy. So then I thought, well, maybe I could use tights as I didn't have any power mesh in the house. So I then got a pair of old tights and I cut the leg off um, and Here's the leg, but I, when I put this on and I wanted to see if it would stay up or not, um, it actually does give a bit of a Nora Batty effect, if anybody's familiar with that reference. But anyway, it's sort of very unglamorous, it sort of wrinkles 
around your leg like that. And also it, uh, it ladders, so that's just a, a bad idea. But the whole point of design is you have lots and lots of ideas and each new idea is called an iteration and you try it out and you learn something new. So first idea of putting white on white, I realised that's not really going to stand out enough. Um, and then I put white on the nude and I'm just not convinced by that. And I thought I could use power mesh, so I cut this strip and I folded the edges under and I thought maybe I could put it on the leg like that. But I'm not convinced that looks very nice. Um, so I think I might... That would work. It would stay on the leg because I could make the power mesh tight on the leg. Um, if it was... The truth is I really don't like this. And then I thought, what if I put some white ribbon, solid ribbon, behind the lace on top of the elastic and that would make it stand out more, but I'm still not sure that does it. And also this has no stretch, and that does, so that won't work. So you can see that all the different thought processes one goes through, you kind of eliminate some solutions and you introduce other variables. So. I wonder if it's possible to incorporate this, which is stretchy, but that's not very bridal. What I really needed was some stretchy white or blue ribbon. And then I remembered, I do have elastic. And if I double it up, that is pretty much exactly the width that I want. This still shows through blue. So what I'm going to do here is put some beads and little sequins and things on it to lift it a little bit, but obviously not to make it too three-dimensional because that defeats the whole point of making a flat garter. So I'm going to put this all together and then I will show it to you. In the meantime, having decided roughly on all the components of the garter, I played about a bit with the various combinations um, and eventually completely confused myself, so I had to ask the bride to just pick one, which she did. Now to um, affix the applique onto the stretch lace, what I'm going to use is this stuff, which is heat bond, which is basically paper that has glue um, printed onto one side of it. And the idea is you take your, take your applique and you put it face side down onto the paper, draw around it, as I've just done. I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to heat bond that onto the back of my embroidered applique that I've just dropped on the floor. Right, and here we have it. This is the heat bond which I have cut out and my applique is now face down with the embroidery, embroidered beading facing down so that I'm intending to put glue on the back of that so that then I can use that to attach it to the stretch elastic. So here is my iron. I'm just going to hold it on like this. Um, you must not, or I wouldn't advise you, to start moving your iron around because you can very easily move the paper or move the applique underneath and then you end up scorching your lace and you have to start all over again. <laughs> right. I will bond all of this and then I will come back to you. And here we have the applique with the paper attached to the back. The glue has worked, it's attached itself to the applique and now I'm just going to peel it off. Um, fine, I think I started a little edge here. Here we are. unwrapping a Christmas present. There we are, look, and I hope you can see from the shiny reflection that what we have here is the same applique but it now has a layer of glue all across the back of it. 
so I can use that to iron it on to whatever is going to go behind it. Now, obviously, do not iron from the front because you will melt your sequins and beads. You have to iron from the back. But we'll come back to that, but I just wanted to show you this stage before we proceed to the next. And finally, we're getting on the home straight now. Um, so the applique, which is not stretchable, has a layer of glue on the back of it. I've tacked or basted the stretch elastic on top of the stretch lace because everything is movable here. So we've got stretchy lace, we've got stretchy elastic. If I put them under a sewing machine, they're both going to sort of move and they won't end up nice and flat. So having basted, I'm then going to use a um, stretch stitch along here so that when on a leg, it will actually, the whole thing will move. It won't do that now because the running stitch obviously won't stretch. So I'm going to just do stretch stitch along here and along here, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So I've stretch stitched down the middle on a big zigzag and with a very narrow zero width um, stretch stitch on either side. And I've taken the tacking out, so now you can see the whole thing still stretches because everything is stretchy. Now the penultimate thing we have to do is to attach the beautifully embroidered applique which goes in the centre here. So I'm going to iron that on from the back because I don't want to knot the sequins with the iron and then I'm going to do a little bit of hand stitching just to hold it in place. I'm not going to stitch it on too tightly because when it's tight pulled around the leg like this I don't want it to go out of shape. And here it is, ironed. You can see it stays put, um, but also stretches because obviously this part here is very stretchy. I'm just going to put a few extra stitches here by hand to hold it in place. And the final step is to put the ends together like this, sew it up, and finish the edges. And there we have. I think the flattest possible garter that you can make. No frills, very little 3D, so it comes out probably by about two, two millimetres from the leg, so hopefully that will not make any visible impression through the dress. Um, and I don't think that those sequins, etc., will catch on any underskirts. And there we have it, finally, the flat garter for a tight-fitting wedding dress um, and just to make sure it doesn't slip because this lace although elasticated is a little bit slippery what I've done is I have I've used the same um, iron-on adhesive and left this side just um, unsealed so that's gluey but not sticky gluey so it's slightly a rubberized texture and that will give the garter more traction on the leg and make it less likely to slip. Something else you could do, there was a little blue for luck on the back, something else you could do um, just if you're worried about your garter slipping is just a little bit of hairspray on the inside. Um, that will work better if you've got a flat surface on the inside as with this one which is that sort of iron-on glue. And there, so, so that, I hope, has given you lots of ideas about how to make a garter for a very tight-fitting wedding dress so that you have your garter but it doesn't show through with either a bulge or in visibility in any other way. And if you are getting married this summer, I wish you all the best and happiness and joy in your future life. And in case you haven't seen enough, here are some of the other possibilities which I considered together with um, the embroidery of the applique in various stages just to completely show you how I just totally confused myself about which was the best one. I was losing the ability to make decisions. But anyway, they're all very pretty, so just had a look. Which one would you have chosen?